Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. And make sure to stick until the end of the video where I have two bonus problems that are similar to this one which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have 5 to the power of x is equal to 7 to the power of x plus 1. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 7 to the power of x plus 1, that's going to equal 7 to the power of x times 7 to the power of 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 7 to the power of x. So then these two cancel out. Now I'll have 5 to the power of x over 7 to the power of x is equal to 7 to the power of 1. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m over b to the power of m, this is the same thing as a over b to the power of m. So 5 to the power of x over 7 to the power of x, that's going to equal 5 over 7 to the power of x, and this is equal to 7. Now I'm going to go take the log on both sides. So I have log 5 over 7 to the power of x is equal to log 7. Now if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move this x1 and b to the front of the logarithm. So this would equal v times log a. So I can move x here to the front. So this is going to equal x times log 5 over 7, which is equal to log 7. Now I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by log 5 over 7. So then these two cancel out, and now I have x is equal to log 7 over, now if I have something in the form log a over b, it's the same thing as log a minus log b. So log 5 over 7, that's going to equal log 5 minus log 7. So now, Log 7, this is actually equal to 0 0.8451 over log 5, this is equal to 6 point, 0 0.6990. And I have minus log 7 again, which is 0 0.8451. And this is actually equal to 0 0.8451 over negative 0 0.146. And if you divide these two, you get negative 5.7844. So this is our answer. All right, so I5 to the power of k is equal to 0. So for our solution, we start with 5 to the power of k is equal to 0. Then I'm going to go ahead and take the log on both sides. So now I have log 5 to the power of k is equal to 0. Now, an important property of logarithms is that if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move this exponent b to the front of the logarithm. So this would be equal to b times log a. And what is actually so useful about this property is, let's say we have 7 to the power of x is equal to 9, right? Well, if we use this property, before, before using this property, first off, x, as you see, this is an exponent. And we can't really do much when x is an exponent because it's really hard to solve for x, in this case especially, because this x is going to be a decimal. So by using this property, we first have to take the log on both sides. And then we can use this property by moving x to the front. So we have x times log 7 is equal to log 9. And now, because x is an actual term, it's pretty simple to solve for it. All we have to do is divide by log 7 on both sides. And we get x is equal to log 9 over log 7. So as you can see, this property is really useful for solving for x when it's an exponent. So going back to 
our normal problem here, we had log five to the power of K is equal to log zero. Now we can move this exponent K to the front of the logarithm. So now I have K times log five is equal to log zero. Now we're obviously solving for a K. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by log five. So then these two will cancel out and I'll be left with K is equal to log zero over log five. Now, log zero, this is actually undefined. And log five, this is equal to 0 0.6990. So K is equal to undefined over 0 0.6990. And if you, you can't really divide undefined by anything because it's simply undefined. So this means that K is just undefined. It has no value. You can't take the log of zero. And also you can't take the power of any number and make it zero because zero is not possible. You can get one because if you took five to the power of zero, that equal one, but zero is impossible. You can't take the power of a number and get zero. Five to the power of X is equal to 50. Now 50, this is the same thing as five times 10. So now I have five to the power of X is equal to five times 10. Now I'm gonna go ahead and divide both sides by five. So then these two cancel out and I'll have five to the power of X over five is equal to 10. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n. This is the same thing as a to the power of m minus n. So for phi to the power of x over five, well five, this is the same thing as phi to the power of one. So phi to the power of x over phi to the power of one, that's gonna equal phi to the power of x minus one, which is equal to 10. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take the log on both sides. So now I have log phi to the power of x minus one is equal to log 10. Now, if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can actually move this exponent b to the front of the logarithm. So this is gonna equal b times log a. And this property is actually really useful because as you see here in the form log a to the power of b, b is an exponent. And solving for an exponent is actually really hard. For example, if I had seven to the power of x is equal to nine, x is an exponent and x is actually a decimal because you can't take seven to the power of whole number and make it nine. So this is actually gonna be almost impossible to solve by just on your own. But however, when we use this property, we can take the log on both sides. So we have log seven to the power of x is equal to log nine. And now I can go ahead and move this to the front. So this would equal x times log seven is equal to log nine. And now I can divide both sides by log seven because as you can see, x is an actual term now and it's pretty simple to solve for it. So now we have x is equal to log nine over log seven. So now going back to our original problem, we had log five to the power of X minus one is equal to log 10. So now I can go ahead and move this X one and X minus one to the front. So now I have X minus one times log five is equal to log 10. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by log 5. So then these two will cancel out. And I'll be left with x minus 1 is equal to log 10 over log 5. So now I'm going to go ahead and add 1 on both sides. So I have x is equal to log 10 over log 5 plus 1. Now log 10, this is the same thing as 1. So now I have x is equal to 1 over log 5 plus 1. Now log 5, this is equal to 0 0.6990. So now I have x is equal to 1 over 0 0.6990 plus 1. Now 1 over 0 0.6990 is 1.4306 plus 1. This is equal to 2.4306. So that is our answer. <laughs>Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this problem without a calculator. So we have 200 squared minus 199 squared. And a lot of you there might be thinking, well, how are we going to do this without a calculator? These numbers are so big and squaring them, that would create a number so large that it would be really challenging to do on paper. Well, there is a simple trick to doing problems such as these ones. So if you recall, a squared minus b squared this is an important expression in algebra and this is actually equal to a plus b times a minus b. So a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So all we have to do is plug in 200 and 199 for a and b. Well, we could say that a is 200 and b is 199. So, meaning 200 squared minus 199 squared, this is equal to 200 plus 199 times 200 minus 199. Now 200 plus 199, that's going to be 399. So now we have 399 times 200 minus 199. Well, these two only have a difference of one. So we simply have 399 times one. And this is really simple. Anything times one is itself. So this would simply equal 399, meaning the answer to this problem is 399, and it's that simple.